Hi guys, during previous weeks when we've looked at multiplication and division problems, we've focused on analysing those problems. Using bar models to understand the relationship between the values in order to help us make decisions about the strategy that we're going to use. This week we're going to focus on developing success criteria for a particular strategy. We're going to be looking at partitioning arrays. To begin with, let's get thinking. Here we've got four different problems, each with the same value, so those values aren't going to give you any clues about how to solve them. We've also got four different bar models that analyse these. I want you to match the problems with the bar models. You'll need to add the descriptions of the whole amounts and the parts. Then, if you like, you can have a go at solving these. Question 1. Peter buys eight concert tickets for £96. What is the cost of one ticket? Question 2. Homer's restaurant bill comes to £96. He has £8 cash and pays the rest on his credit card. How much does he pay by credit card? Question 3. A flight to London costs £96. How much will it cost for Han to buy eight tickets? And question 4. Two buses are needed to take children on a school trip. There are 96 children on the buses. Eight children are off ill. How many children are meant to be on the trip? Pause the video for a few minutes, discuss these with a partner and then share your thoughts with the rest of the class. Let's match these up correctly. Let's have a look at the first one. Peter buys eight concert tickets for £96. What is the cost of one ticket? Well, in this problem here, the whole amount is £96 and we're looking to buy eight tickets. So we're looking for the bar that has a whole amount of £96 and is split into eight parts. So you can see that's that yellow bar down the bottom. What about question two? Homer's restaurant bill comes to £96. He has £8 cash and pays the rest on his credit card. How much does he pay by credit card? Well, in this problem here, the whole amount is the total bill, which is £96. So we're looking for a bar that has 96 as the whole amount. How many parts is that bar split into? Well, he pays some of the bill by cash and some by credit card. So we're looking for the bar that is 96 is the whole amount and is split into two parts. And we know that one of those parts is £8. So we can see there that must be the green bar. Question 3. A flight to London costs £96. How much will it cost for hand to buy eight tickets? Well, in this case here, we know that each flight costs £96 and he's looking to buy eight of those tickets, which means we're looking for a bar that's split into eight parts where each of the parts is 96. And you can see there, that's the red bar. Which means for question four, two buses are needed to take children on a school trip. There are 96 children on the buses. Eight children are off ill. How many children are meant to be on the trip? Well, in that question there, the two buses doesn't really have anything to do with the calculation that we're performing. Because actually we're interested in the number of children. We know that some of the children are on the bus and some of the children are ill. So we've got two parts. We know one of those parts is 96, that's the children who are on the bus, and one of the parts is 8, that's the children who are off ill, so we're looking for the whole amount. So as you can see, that relates to that blue bar there. It's time to get investigating with a partner. I've got a couple of problems I'd like you to have a go at together. A box contains 36 candles. Millhouse is trying to work out how many candles there are in three boxes. And you can see there, he's used an algorithm to multiply 36 by 3, and he's got an answer of 128. Ron and Lloyd are trying to work out how many candles there are in 24 boxes. And you can see there, Ron's attempt at 24 times 36 gives him an answer of 96. And Lloyd's attempt at the same problem gives him an answer of 624. So what I'd like you to do is have a think about the following questions. Can you spot any mistakes? Why do you think these mistakes were made? And can you have a go at analysing and solving these problems yourselves? Remember, it's not the answer that's the most important thing, it's how you work those out. So use bars to analyse them, whatever resources you've got available in order to solve them, and draw pictures and number lines in order to make your thinking visible. Pause the video, spend 8-10 to 10 minutes on those and then share your thinking with the rest of the class. 
To begin with, let's have a look at Millhouse's problem. Millhouse is trying to work out how many candles there are in three boxes. So let's analyse this ourselves. So I'm going to start by drawing a bar, and that bar represents the whole amount, and in this case, the whole amount is the total number of candles. How many parts are we going to split that bar into? Well, there are three boxes of candles, so let's split it into three parts. Each of those parts is the number of candles in one box, and now we can put in the numbers we know. In this case, we know there's 36 in one box, and we're trying to work out the whole amount. Now that we've analysed it, let's have a go at solving this, and I'm going to use place value counters in order to do that. So let's put out the number of candles in one box. There's the 36, and the second box, and the third box. So you can see there that we've created an array. We've created an array which is three rows, and there are 36 in each row. But we've not needed to put 36 ones in each row because we've used those tens to help us. So all we need to do now is work out how much there is there all together. Now, I don't know three lots of 36, but what I can do is I can partition this array. I can split it into parts. So if I partition that array there, I'm splitting that 36 into the tens and the ones. So I've got three lots of 30 and three lots of six. Now, three lots of 30 gives us 90. Three lots of six gives us 18. Now all we need to do is add those amounts together. So 90 plus the 18 gives us 108. So there are 108 candles in three boxes. So why has Millhouse done that? He's used an algorithm which, when used correctly, will give us the correct answer. But he's got himself a bit mixed up. He's multiplied 3 by 6 to get 18 correctly. But when he's carried that 110 over into the tens column, he's then included that in the next calculation. So rather than multiplying three tens by three to get 90, he's multiplied four tens by three to get 120. Having the array there to visualize the calculation helps us avoid those mistakes that many of us make because those algorithms can get us mixed up, especially when we're relying on memorizing rather than understanding them. Let's discuss that second problem. Ron and Lloyd are trying to work out how many candles there are in 24 boxes. So again, let's analyse this in order to make a decision about how we're going to solve it. Let's start by drawing the whole bar again, and that whole bar represents the total number of candles. This time, how many parts are we going to split that bar into? Well, we've got 24 boxes this time, so we might have to split that bar into 24 parts. And each of those 24 parts would represent the candles in one box. Now that we've done that, we can put the values in we know. We know there are 36 candles in one box, and we're trying to work out the whole amount. But is there a way of avoiding splitting that bar into 24 parts? What we could do instead is split the bar into 10 boxes of candles, because that would be easy to calculate. And then another 10 boxes, and then 4 boxes. So rather than having to add up 24 lots of 36, we can think about 10 lots of 36, another 10 lots of 36, and then another 4 lots of 36. However, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at how we can use an array in order to solve this problem. So here you can see I've drawn an array which has 24 rows and there are 36 in each row. Now I'm going to use base 10 materials to represent that. Now I don't know 24 times 36, so let's partition those values. Rather than having 24, as you can see there, we can split that into 20 rows and then 4 rows. And the 36 can be partitioned into 30 and then 6. So we've split that larger array into 4 smaller parts. We've got a part that's 20 rows by 30, a part that's 20 rows by 6, a part that's 4 rows by 30, and a part that's 4 rows by 6. So let's work these out one part at a time. For 20 times 30, for each of those 10 that multiplied together, we get 100. We've got two 10s multiplied by three 10s, so we get 600s. What about 20 times 6? Again, for each of those ones, we're multiplying it by two 10s. So altogether, we get 12 10s there, which gives us 120. What about 4 times 30? Again, for each of those ones, we get three tens. We've got four lots of three tens, 
which gives us 12 tens, and again, we've got 120 there. And then lastly, we've got four times six, and four times six gives us 24. Now all we need to do is add up the 600, the two lots of 120, and the 24. And again, there are lots of different ways that we could do that. I might start with my 600 and add 100 of that first 120. Then add the 100 from the second 120. That's me get 800 so far. Then I can add the 20 and the 20 and the 24, which gives me 864 altogether. So in 24 boxes, there are 864 candles. So where have the boys gone wrong? Ron's correctly multiplied 4 by 6 to get 24, but then he's got completely mixed up and multiplied 36 by 2 rather than 20. Lloyd's multiplied 4 by 6 and 20 by 30 correctly, but he's completely missed out two of those parts. He's missed out the 20 by 6 and he's missed out the 4 by 30. They've each got themselves mixed up by misremembering that algorithm and not having the array there to help them understand the calculations that are needed in order to solve this. It's time to discuss our success criteria. How did we achieve success? So pause the video for a few minutes and discuss with a partner the steps that you would have to go through in order to solve similar problems. For each of these problems, the first thing we did was we analysed them. Once we'd analysed them, that helped us make a decision and we decided that we were going to solve them using multiplication and using arrays. So the first thing we did when we solved each of those problems was we drew that array. Once we'd done that, we could then identify the number of rows and the value of each row. So in the first case, that was three lots of 36 candles. And in the second case, we had 24 lots of 36 candles. Now I couldn't work out three times 36 or 24 times 36 in one go. So the next thing I did was I partitioned that array. So for the first problem, we split that into three lots of 30 and three lots of six. And for the second problem, we split the 24 rows into 20 rows and then four rows and the 36 in each row into 30 and six. So we ended up splitting that array into four parts. Once we'd partitioned the array into more manageable parts, we could then calculate the value of each part. So for the first problem, that was three lots of 30 to give us 90 and three lots of six to give us 18. For the second problem, it was 20 lots of 30 to give us 600, 20 lots of six to give us 120, four lots of 30 to give us 120, and four lots of six to give us 24. Now that we've worked out the value of each of those partitions, the last thing we can do is calculate the total. And in order to do that, in these examples, we added those parts together. We added the 90 and the 18 to get 108 candles. And in the second problem, we added the 600, the two lots of 120 and the 24 in order to give us 864. It's time to try that out. Can we apply that success criteria in order to solve each of the following problems? As ever, I've got three problems, each with three different values, and I want you to choose the values that are most suited to you. So for question one, I'm going to use that yellow value. Master Wu shares out a bag of money equally between the six ninjas. They receive £27 each. How much was in the bag? For question two, I'm going to use the green number. Professor Snape has 18 copies of a magic spells textbook that contains 214 pages. How many pages are there altogether? And for question three, I'm going to use the red number. Mrs. Krabappel has 34 days to work before the holidays. She spends £3.79 a day at the canteen on her lunch. How much will she spend on lunches between now and the holidays? Can you analyse those problems and then solve them by applying that success criteria? If you get finished in the time, I want you to make up three similar problems for somebody else to solve. Pause the video for 10 minutes or so and have a go at those. It's time to reflect on today's learning. So with a partner or as a class, I want you to think about the following questions. What have you learned today? What did you find easy or difficult? Did you get stuck? What helped when something got tricky? What do you need more help with? What is really making you think? And what are your next steps?
The last thing I'm going to ask you to do today is can you apply what we've learned? So as a class, I want you to discuss, analyze, and solve the following problem. Batman buys a discounted rail card for the month of June while the Batmobile is getting repaired. The first seven days are charged full price and the remaining days are half price. A daily ticket would cost £3.40. How much does he pay for the rail card? Thanks for joining me again today. I hope you enjoyed that. As ever, if you've got any questions or you'd like to share your solutions with me, you can contact me at scott.morrow at southairshore.gov.uk or you can tweet me at scottmorrowsa. Next week, we're going to be analysing solving problems that involve mixed operations. I hope you can join me then.